Hi, I'm Dr. Drew Hanks with the Smarter Lunchrooms Movement and the Cornell Center for Behavioral Economics and Child Nutrition Programs, otherwise known as the Ben Center. This video is the first in a series of videos which will illustrate the importance of collecting data and research, introduce you to, to experimental design methods, discuss the type of data that are available in school lunchrooms, and then train you in our preferred method of collecting tray waste in cafeterias. So for this video, I will talk to you about the importance of data and why we collect it for our research. We collect data all the time for all sorts of daily activities that we do. Think about, for example, buying a house or buying a car. You collect data to know the price, if it fits your preferences, what you like, if it will be a good car and last a while or a good, a good house and, and, and last a while, if you know, what people lived in it before. You try and collect all sorts of data about these particular items. You think about what school you want to send your child to or which school you want to attend. You want to know what the tuition is, if it's a good school, what programs it has. These are all examples where we collect data. Now in food service we want to know, for example, how much pizza do the kids want or how much do they take? How, much, how many servings of salad do we need to order so that we can meet the demand for the, of the students? These are all examples of data that we collect in order to answer these questions that we have. Now, the principle is this. Data are essential for making, appropriate, for making proper judgments and drawing proper conclusions about questions that we have. Let me illustrate the importance of collecting data with this example from our own research. We had a theory that if we placed vegetables first in a lunch line, we would actually increase the amount of vegetables that students took. Other experiments demonstrated that placing an item first in a lunch line would result in that item being taken uh, more often. But we wanted to test it for, for vegetables because we knew that we had to gather data before we could actually make this suggestion to school lunchrooms. So we did just that. We conducted an experiment, collected the data, and found that placing the vegetable first actually led to a decrease the amount of vegetables that students were taking. How could this be? Turns out that students wanted to, uh, wanted to choose the, the entree before they made their vegetable selection. This provided us an incredible insight into food, uh, into food preferences and behavior, which we would not have known if we had not collected data and run this experiment. Now when we are collecting data, there are two types that I'd like to talk about. One is anecdotal data or anecdotal evidence and the other is experimental evidence. Anecdotal evidence is usually limited based on one, maybe two observations. It can be biased and it can lead to biased judgments or biased conclusions. For example, take this quarter right here. Standard quarter, okay? Smells like a normal quarter, bites like a normal quarter. Is it normal? Let's see. I flipped heads. Does this mean this quarter is weighted towards heads? If this were my only observation, maybe that's the conclusion I would draw. If I were to flip this coin 10 times, 50 times, 100 times, 1,000 times, eventually what would happen is I would flip heads just about as often as I would flip tails, showing that this quarter is not weighted. That's the experimental evidence we need to collect when we, when we are running or when we are interested in answering questions about our, uh, research questions. Now, think about your lunchroom students, okay? Lunchroom students on any particular day might exhibit a, a behavior based on what happened that morning or based on different situations they might have encountered that day. That does not change their underlying behavior what it might change is how they react to specific situations. We collect observations on those particular students over multiple days in order to cancel out those funny behaviors that might be there because of specific situations on the day. For example, maybe there was a sporting event that day. Maybe they just came from a field trip or, a, or an assembly. Okay, we collect multiple observations so that we can help cancel out those particular situations and draw proper conclusions. 
So that's the difference between anecdotal evidence, which can be limited and biased, and experimental evidence, which helps us draw appropriate conclusions and make appropriate inferences. Let me give you a few examples of data from our own research. As we collect data, we like to calculate averages, minimums, maximums, and, maximums, and percentages. And from our own evidence, we found, for example, that placing a convenience line for placing, making healthier foods more convenient in a lunch line uh, increases the likelihood that students will take a healthier lunch by about 28%. We also found that associating a particular fruit, apples in this case, with a character can increase uh, the amount of apples that students take by about twofold. We also found that cutting apples, something as simple as slicing apples, results in an increase in uh, a 20 gram increase in the amount of apples students are taking. Let me restate that. Providing students with sliced apples increases in the amount they consume by about 20 grams. These are just a few examples of statistics that we generate from the data that we collect. Now in summary, I want to emphasize once again that data collection is essential for making proper judgments and drawing proper conclusions about behavior in the lunchroom. Over the next week, I invite you to find a situation in which you can collect data. For example, if you're a food service director, collect data about the amount of fruit the students are taking. Or in your own life, look at how often you eat fruit for a snack or, or salty foods for a snack. Just find any situation you can in your own life to collect data and do that over a week period. Okay. Once again, I'm Dr. Drew Hanks with the Smarter Lunchrooms Movement and the Cornell Center for Behavioral Economics and Child Nutrition Programs. Visit www.smarterlunchrooms.org and click on the Resources tab for a lot of wonderful materials that will help you as you strive to make your lunchroom smarter and conduct your own research.